Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 40 in the Douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 41 in the RSV. Unto the end, a psalm for David himself. Brief description of the psalm's purpose. Blessed is he that understandeth concerning the needy and the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the evil day. Not just people who give to the poor, but people who understand what they need in order to take action for their benefit. As Jesus said, those who act mercifully towards the least do so towards him. The Lord preserve him, and give him life, and make him blessed upon the earth, and deliver him not up to the will of his enemies. In short, may God grant every earthly blessing to the person who is good at helping the poor, and does so. The Lord help him on his bed of sorrow. Thou hast turned all his couch in his sickness. Couch refers to a type of furniture that a person stretches out on while reclining or sick. In the times of the Roman Empire, they were frequently used at meals. Anyway, in this case, the verse specifically mentions sickness, so a couch in sickness means that the person has been lying down or reclining because of how sick they are. Turned means changed, so this verse is saying that God helps people when they suffer misery in the privacy of their own thoughts, his bed, and heals those who are seriously sick. I said, O Lord, be thou merciful to me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Every one of us have sinned, and we plead with God for forgiveness, so that we can be restored to a good relationship with him through his mercy. My enemies have spoken evils against me. When shall he die and his name perish? It sounds like David's enemies are getting impatient with how long he's lived. Most truly just people who live long enough will find themselves with these kinds of enemies. And if he came in to see me, he spoke vain things. His heart gathered together iniquity to itself. He went out and spoke to the same purpose. This is still the enemies. They only focus on temporary things that don't matter, committing serious sins and using their words to carry out evil. All my enemies whispered together against me. They devised evils to me. They determined against me an unjust word. Shall he that sleepeth rise again no more? David's enemies were at least planning for his death, even if they didn't actually try to bring it about. For even the man of peace in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, hath greatly supplanted me. There's always that one person who we just do everything for, and yet they try to take advantage of us or betray us when the opportunity presents itself. But thou, O Lord, have mercy on me, and raise me up again, and I will requite them. David asks for the opportunity to pay back his enemies for what they have done, and knows that only the mercy of God can grant that to him. By this I know that thou hast had a good will for me, because my enemy shall not rejoice over me. Because David didn't personally hear God's voice, though prophets did occasionally visit him, he mainly determined the will of God by the blessings he was given. But thou hast upheld me by reason of my innocence, and hast established me in thy sight forever. Because David didn't do the things that his enemies accuse him of, he looks forward to being forgiven of his own sin and vindicated by God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from eternity to eternity. So be it, so be it. As David looks forward to blessings from God, so he acknowledges that God is, always has been, and always will be more blessed than anyone or anything. God, after all, is the very source of all blessings. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.